When I first started my career in performance measurement, the balance scorecard was the new thing. And I was pretty excited at first because it was being heralded as the best methodology for measuring organisational performance that had ever been developed. For me, it turned out that it wasn't. I was the measurement consultant in Queensland Rail at the time and my hope was that I had found the guidance that I'd been looking for to lead my colleagues to more meaningful measures, basically. But when I'd learned about it, um, I felt let down. There was nothing at all in the balance scorecard that guided me on how to design performance measures for strategic objectives. Now sure, the methodology explained why we need a scorecard of measures that is balanced. It explained how to get that balance. But there was nothing about how exactly to decide what the measures themselves should be and how to implement them, how to report and interpret and use them to drive performance improvement. The practical on-the-ground struggles that I had in making performance measurement happen were not addressed at all in the balance scorecard. And that's because it's actually a strategy framework and not a performance measurement methodology. The same goes for many other um, so-called measurement methodologies and frameworks. Uh, program logic model, uh, results-based accountability framework, um, OKRs even. Now these methodologies and frameworks guide us to decide maybe what aspects of performance are important. They give no practical guidance on exactly how to choose and create and use the measures that are needed to monitor those aspects of performance. They are results frameworks. We need to integrate a measurement methodology into whatever results framework that we're using. And we do this by linking it in at the point or step of defining what our performance results are. These performance results might be called objectives, uh, you might call them goals, outcomes, inputs, outputs, doesn't matter. In the balanced scorecard, for example, this is the point at which strategic objectives are developed for the strategy map, before the, the strategy map is cascaded and before initiatives are developed. And in any other results framework, it's the point where goals are written to describe the end states that the strategy aims to make a reality. We need to identify this step uh, in whatever results framework we're using and insert into that step a true methodology for designing our measures. We're using measurement at this step to make the results uh, specific and observable or, or detectable. We're making them measurable. The act of designing a measure for a result, it forces that result to be expressed clearly so it can be understood and recognised when we bring it into reality um, as we make it happen. We might have strategic objectives on our strategy map or outcomes in our logic model or goals for our critical success factors um, that, that sound a bit like these. Enhance customer loyalty. Foster a resilient and adaptable workforce optimise environmental sustainability. Well, good luck trying to find meaningful measures for results like those, um, particularly by following only the steps in your results framework. Almost all results frameworks fail to produce measurable result statements and consequently fail to guide us to meaningful performance measures for them. What we need is a true measurement methodology to support our results framework. So, what's a true measurement methodology? Well, it, it is a set of instructions for exactly how to design the best evidence that would convince us our results happening. To convert that evidence into quantitative measures, to define the exact details of how to calculate the measures and bring them to life, to report them in the right context and the right graphical presentation to monitor their change over time and how far they are from target, and to find the leverage that will close the gap between actual performance and that target. Now one example of a true measurement methodology is PUMP. 
So what's the results framework that you use? It might be worthwhile to reflect on how well it has guided you to meaningful quantitative measures of performance, because my guess is that it hasn't guided you much at all.